Hello once more time, this is uh, Andrew Klein, this is video 9 in my compositing tutorial series. In uh, this video we're going to take a look at uh, continuing breaking out my foreground character so I can start to create my shadow passes and my reflections passes as well. Uh, back in video 3 of this series I had actually created uh, the separate passes from my master layer to my foreground character layer. Uh, this way I can separate out individual elements. Uh, what I want to do is I now want to sort of propagate this foreground character layer into two more layers, uh, one for my shadows and one for my reflections. One so I can just sort of like get the cast shadows here on the ground and the other so I can get his reflection in the uh, window back here. So to do this, um, first off, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to select like everything in my foreground layer. Uh, you know, one obvious way to do this, you can just back all the way up and try and select everything. But you know, my scene is so huge that it may not select all of my elements. So uh, instead, here, what I'm going to do is uh, go into my hypergraph and uh, again just reselect my geometry, my lighting my character, my bag, um, you know, sort of any of the props that I need. Uh, select all of this stuff. I've got it all. And uh, again, I'm going to make a new render layer. So uh, to do this, uh, I can click on the uh, blue ball white plane supernova icon. And uh, this is going to be a new layer one where I've got everything in my scene. Again, I was changing some properties here. If I go back to my render settings window, you'll remember that in my foreground layer, I had changed my uh, end frame to be uh, 570 because I was only rendering the master frame once. In my new layer one, I'm also going to set my end frame to 570. Oops, sorry. Got to create my layer override first. Right click on end frame, create layer override, and then I can type 570. Uh, in my layer one here, I'll double click on this and let's call this uh, character shadow. So I have a character shadow pass. Uh, under passes, there are really no passes that I actually need here. Uh, and under features, uh, I'm actually going to turn off my final gather because I only, again, need the final gather in my base passes. So I'll right click, create layer override, and I'll turn off my final gathering. Also, my character is invisible in this uh, render layer because he was invisible in the master layer and I'm pretty much cloning that. So uh, I'm gonna select my character using my hypergraph and in the attribute editor under the display options, I'll right click on visibility, choose create layer override, and turn back on my character's visibility. So here's my base setup for my character shadow pass. Uh, before I go any further, what I might as well do, since I got everything set up here the way I want, is I'm just going to take this layer and right click on it and choose copy layer, making another layer that's an exact duplicate called character shadow one. I'll double click on this to rename it and call it character reflections. So it's these two render passes that I'm going to modify in a bit. I might as well uncheck my master layer and uncheck my foreground character layer. So I just pretty much have the shadow and reflections here. Uh, let me go ahead and save this as a version 3 since I was working on start 02 before. I'll use this as start 03 right now. And uh, I now have these uh, alternate layers set up, pretty much uh, ready for me to work with to create a shadow pass and a reflections pass. So uh, we're actually going to make those passes in the next two videos. Uh, first we're going to do shadow and then reflections. So stick around for uh, video 10 where we are going to um, dig a little bit deeper. Thank you.